beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just kind of sure I'm not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm in the workshop, beavering away. December, it's cold, the log burner's on. There will be some cracks and pops and, and bangs and whatever noises it decides to make in the background. Um, what am I up to? Well, being December, being it's cold, Tomorrow night I've planned a shore cod fishing session. Try and get my first shore cod of the year. And something that I like to do when I do these sort of winter sessions where it may be extreme weather, whether it's stormy, cold, wet, you know what I'm talking about, is to pre-prepare the bait. So today I'm gonna to pre-prepare cod baits based on, uh, I've got wraps of black lug, got plenty of black lug and I've got some boxes of royal squid which is my preferred this is what I like um, and they're sort of half defrosted they're not fully defrosted so I'm going to prepare some squid and black lug wraps using a bait needle and elastic uh, show you how I do it and then I'm going to swap to actually vacuum packing this stuff down using the vacuum pack machine, specialist bags that I like to use. I'll show you the process of how I vacuum pack and the beauty of that, and there's a whole world of, of openings with vacuum packing, it, and it goes way beyond just bait. Um, by vacuum packing, vacuum packing it down into portionable sizes, you get to the beach, you cut the top of the bag, Everything stays in there so nothing leaks out because it's quite wet bait that we're dealing with. Um, portion sized for your hooks and your panel rigs. Um, and then it, if you take several bags and two of the bags you don't open, you just bring them home, put them back in the freezer. And they, while they're in there, they're still steeping, they're still absorbing all the flavours of things like the black lug and the, and the squid, you know, and it's all held in the juices that you vacuum packed in. Absolute winner brilliant for when your hands are going to be cold and wet and it all gets difficult and it all gets awkward but speed is of the essence when the cod come through and the local fishing mark i'll be fishing tomorrow they may only be there for an hour and they'll transition through so you want your rigs out in the water maximum time fishing you don't want loads of time cleaning up and removing bait and and re sort of presenting bait when really you could just be hooking up and putting back in, hooking up, putting back in, spare rig, bait it, unclip, clip on, get it back out. Maximum time, two rods fishing. That's what we're talking about. So it's gonna be squid, black luck wraps, and then we'll transition, I'll clear this away and we'll get the vacuum packing machine out and uh, we'll vac pack them down, ready for tomorrow. Should be, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, you know, and all the other bits and pieces, a good session tomorrow. Um, and that fire is lovely and warm. You can tell. You can tell it's cold. Workshop hasn't warmed up yet. I've only been out here about a quarter of an hour. So let's dilly dally. Let's jibber jabber. I'll get on and get going, eh? We'll get started. So first things first. Bait needle. I'm using a dual bait needle. I've got a sharp knife, pair of scissors, and elastic, and my trusty chopping board. Small squid to start with. I'm just looking at the box now and I deliberately picked a small one out. I'm easing myself in. <laughs> uh, and I do not want baits any bigger than that tomorrow. And that is about a thumb and a half when using my porky sausage measuring stick. So I think all of my other baits, and if the squid is larger than that, they're gonna be smaller. I'm gonna have to cut them down. Black lug comes in wraps. This has already been left out overnight in a bucket to defrost, make it easier to work with. Obviously it isn't gonna bend and move if it's frozen. Um, and you can refreeze it. It, it, it is, um, it is com quite compliant like that. And these are, I'll try and explain it as best I can. They're almost like a waxy, greasy, yeah, there's almost like a tar-like substance to them. And that is full of scent. And for some reason, 
Not sure why, but cod seem to love it. They love the combination. This is a classic combination. And all I will do now, I haven't put that, because it's quite a small piece, I've only just put it on a single needle. I've doubled over the black lug. Just lay it on top and take my elastic and try my best that it doesn't all just fall apart because I knew it would. Slippery little things, these things. Um, usually if you hold it vertical, it tends to help. But the other aspect of this, because it's two needles, it sort of, it doesn't crush it too much. I don't want to squash this thing down into like non-existence. I want it to have some body to it. I want it to have some shape. Um, and, you know, there's, 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 these things always spark some criticism about the amount of elastic. I'm using a medium elastic, not thick or fine. Fine tends to be hard work, especially when using it on the beach. Um, it would be a bit messy. And then to tie it off, I wrap it around my finger and then pass it through. And I do that a couple of times and then pull free. And then what we end up with is, that is pretty much a Richmond sausage size bait. Other sausages are available. So that is a thumb, almost two thumbs, a thumb and a half, thumb and three quarters. The hard bit then is to remove it without damaging it and it retains its shape. And when you pen all that, when you put your hook through the bottom, have it proud, hook the opposite direction and snag into the top, that will present as a stunning bait. So with the bigger ones, I do like to take the wings off because I don't want this sort of helicoptering around in the tide. And because of the size of this bait, I'm thinking about taking the head off and removing like the, it's almost like a big biro pen insert that, isn't it? Just makes it more flexible. And on this one, scissors tend to be the easier way of doing this sort of stuff, just remove them en masse. So we're ending up with a little pile there, which we'll see, we'll look at something else when we do the vacuum packing as well, because there's a way of using, utilizing your old or, or your wastage parts. So what we can do now, I showed it with a single needle previously. Now I'm gonna put both needles through and what that will do in effect, will stop it from spinning as I tried to put the worm on it. But it is quite intrusive to the bait, so it's puncturing the bait and it can make a bit of a mess. So we've positioned it on the needle. Get ourselves another one of our lovely, I think this is the major part of the attraction. So we could, let's go, let's go crazy. Let's put a couple of pieces on. Let's go, as they say, chicken oriental. So I just double the worm, because that's the sort of size we're dealing with. And this one is a slightly smaller worm. I'm just gonna lay it in on top. And this is the balancing act, really. With the twin needle, you can actually hold it in position, pinch it with your thumb, and wind on your elastic. When you get to the bit where it all goes a bit awry, you can give it a bit of a shake and a wiggle and position all the way down to the bottom. I work my way diagonally all the way back up to the top. Now there is a part where you can concentrate around the head because that's where one of your hooks is gonna show and the elastic gives it some purchase. Just snap that one, being a little bit butch with it. Lay it on again and wrap again. Um, and then when you get to the upper end, there's an aspect up there where your panel hook is gonna want to need some grip. And all you're doing is giving it some reinforcement. Back down to the middle, finger out, loop and pull. Once more, finger out, loop and pull. Hold the, that's getting quite old. I can tell that elastic, it's, it's quite soft actually. I think it must've got wet and, and, and mucked about a couple of times. We end up with all the bait on the needle, support it all and remove it. And we end up with another variation of the same thing. Both of these have still got 
all of the custard, all of the guts, everything inside. When I come to use it, what you can do with a knife or your needle on the day is just pierce it a few times to add the central. So here we are now with the vacuum packing machine and my choice for this, not sponsored, all my own money, all that kind of stuff, so I can talk about it with some disparity, you know, this is my own choice of a kit, um, is Sue Vu. It's a vacuum sealer and the model one is, is an S Sierra Victor Tango 03018. <laughs> Doesn't exactly trip off the tongue, but it's my vacuum packing machine and I love it to pieces. So the first thing you need to do is decide what kind of bags, what kind of sealing you would like to do. And after experimenting, I've gone with a couple of different variations. So the beauty of this is you can put different sizes in. So this size bag for me is perfect for things like sand eel, smaller baits. And when I show you in a minute, you'll see that the baits sit lovely inside this. But if you're using something like mackerel, cuttle, um, you're rebagging some squid um, and a bigger size, these are continuous rolls and there's a larger size and that fits in this same machine as well. And there's also some where you have pattern on one side and clear on the other. And the benefit of clear on one side will become very apparent. I prefer to use the patterned one side clear on the other. So really the machine's got everything inside it that you need. It's got a cutter, it's got a holding rail. I'm just gonna trim this bag because there's a sliding blade. And I've just trimmed off an end because I just did use the machine and I didn't need to, and I thought all of a sudden, I need to show you how I did that. So you feed the end and the end of the bag is now open and it's continuous. Tighten it all up, lay it inside underneath the rail and there's a heat strip down this end and we're going to form the bottom part of our bag. So because we're using a continuous roll, you can buy individual pouches. I don't think that's a good idea to be honest, unless you know exactly what you want. But the beauty of this is you can make different size bags. So you then just close the machine up, lock it down, a light comes on and then you press manual seal. And it'll give a countdown. And I can't speed the machine up. It'll take as long as it wants to take because it's quite cold and it's one of the first uses. That heating bar will take a little bit of time to warm up. It's not really a spectator sport. You're thinking, well, that's taken a long time. That's going to take forever. Once you're in a run and you're doing more and more, it, you don't have to do this every time. So it's doing the countdown now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then a little click hear the click, flash is zero, open it up and it's sealed one end of your bag. So now if we pull some off the strip and we decide what size bag we want, using the blade we can cut it and we have formed ourselves a closed on three size bag that we can put stuff in So we've got our bag closed on three sides and we need to put our bait inside. Now, one thing I will say, I think it always adds and helps to the ceiling. If you turn the top end over by about an inch, what you do by doing that is you don't inadvertently get loads of mess on what will end up being your ceiling edge that is the part that's going to go back into that heating element and whatever vacuum forming machine you've got continuous soiling of that edge and putting through that heating element that's the failure point you're getting nasty stuff where you don't want nasty stuff go a bait slide them inside sort of position it where you want it you can sort of like window dress can't you you can be as as haphazard or as pretty as you want with this. Um, there's no benefit to either really. Um, so we're laying the baits inside. 
just making sure I don't drip squid black lug juice all over my tracky bottoms because I've got my warm tracky bottoms on today. We'll keep going. We'll load this pouch up. As you can see, we're sort of starting to get there, but then there's some bits and pieces we can do. We can put a bait down the side, look, just to fulfill the space. We've got our little donkey sausage bait, can go near the top. I was gonna put a couple of squid heads in this one just to give myself some choice on the day. Just trying to keep as much liquid. You don't want too much liquid. Liquid's the, the vacuum machine killer, if you like. And then we close that top end of the bag up. And obviously this isn't really that much of a spectator sport. When you're doing it on your own, it's a lot slicker, you're a lot quicker. I'm trying to do this for the benefit for the camera. I do find it a lot easier on my own when I'm just doing this. I'm more worried about camera angles and giving you a good, good chance of seeing what's going on. And then this lays down. Across the heat strip and in the vacuum chamber. That's the best description I can put it. There is a chamber there where the vacuum is pulled. And then when you lock that down, it holds it in place. And what we're looking for really is, 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 a, is a clean pull. The vacuum, will, it will pull a vacuum. All prep ready tomorrow. Just get your scissors, snip along the top. You've got a working bag. All the juices are still in there. All the baits are preformed. You can even put that in your bag, your box, and it's not gonna leak. That's another benefit of doing this. So that is, Clear one side, you see the difference? Patterned on the other. I like to have that clear, clear side. The bags are cheaper if they're patterned both sides for some reason. You pay a little bit more for a clear side. It's almost like a wind, shop window, isn't it? Um, but that's one pack lightly vacuumed. So now we'll do another one and show a variation. I just put some more wood on the fire and I swapped the machine over to the larger bag. And this is another one of those continuous bags, so there's no ends to it. I've sealed one end, folded over the top by about an inch, as I previously described. Um, and I was doing all that off camera, was it? And I thought, oh, you, you'll want to see this as well, I think. So we'll share it. So all of my off cuts, all of my ends, and this works for all of my bait. So if I go out on the boat and I've got some leftover bait, I don't waste it. When I bring it home, I vacuum pack it, it goes in what I class as the dirty freezer. I've got one dirty freezer and I've got a huge clean freezer. So it all goes in the dirty freezer. Old sand eel, old mackerel, mackerel guts that when I've been taking the fillets, all the bones and everything else, it all comes back in a bag, in a bucket, and then it gets vacuum packed down. And then all of these chippings and off cuts and bits and pieces, none of this goes to waste. That stuff in itself, what I've just put in there, is absolutely perfect for ground baiting for bream. So why would you throw it away? People throw it away because it's too hard to look after. Do they want to put it in their freezer? Do they want to put it in a carrier bag? Do they want to put it in a sandwich bag? Do they want to, you know, however they're going to look after it, wrap it in cling film, wrap it in this, wrap it in that. Well, what I will say is, the beauty of a bag like this, that's the start. I've still got a pound and a half of squid to work my way through. There's going to be a fair portion, and whatever size that ends up being, I will trim the bag, because you can trim the bag down, it doesn't have to be that big. I'd rather go big and trim some off. Um, so that is going to be all of my trimmings from today's bait prep. It will get vacuumed, and I'll show you again, I'll vac it down, and it will get stored in the freezer. It won't go off, it won't go bad, it won't get freezer burn because it's got the protection of the plastic. The freezer burn is when it's that cold it dries the bait out. Um, I've got bags of this that are lugworm, old ragworm, mackerel pouting, whiting, 
and I either use them as baits, or I'll take that bag and I'll just put small strips on small hooks for, for another bait, or I'll consolidate it, mash it all up, chop it up, chop some bran in, chuck some fish oil in, freeze it in a block, and the next time I go out in the, bag, in the boat, I'll bag it and put it over the side or drop it to the bottom on the anchor chain. So nothing gets wasted. Keep everything. Absolutely keep everything. It's too expensive. It's too, it's too um, fine a resource to waste. So out of that one pound box now, I have got three squid left. I've got three squid. <laughs> that one looks like a size he's gonna go on his own like that. And to be honest, all three of those, I'm gonna prep them as they are. I'm gonna tentacles off, which sounds like a medical procedure, but it's not. Tentacles off. He didn't feel it. Tentacles off. They'll go in the bag. Um, wings off. You could argue that the wings elasticated to the side of the body um, don't pose a problem. They probably don't. This is just a routine that gives me confidence that I like. I'll, I'll always mention that because it's what's in your own head, what you, what you prefer. And then for these particularly, I am going to take that outer membrane skin. I think I'm saying it right when I say chromatophores. I think it's chromatophores. Um, it's the first indication that squid hasn't been stored right when it starts to go pink. It should almost be like a dark, I, I want to say black, but it's not black. My first indication that my squid bait is either getting old or hasn't been stored at the right temperature, when I collect it, when I buy it in bulk, is if it's pink, that says to me at some point it's been defrosted. If it starts to look dry around the frills and the tentacles, that says to me it's quite old and it's been frozen for a long time and it's got freezer burn. So there are things you can do to look after. Things like squid, if it comes in a box within a box, don't decant it. Those cardboard boxes do actually, they've protected it for all that time up until you get in it. Um, sometimes I've had people say to me, well, it looked all right when I got it and I took it home, took it out of the box, put it in the freezer. It looked rubbish when we come to use it. The box protects it. Vacuum packing protects it because it takes the air out of its surrounding. That way it's tight to the plastic. The plastic will, will, help, to, will help to protect it. This stuff, the, the, the backbone, it's got some amazing properties. You put that on the fire, it's almost fire resistant. That just doesn't burn. I say it doesn't burn, it will eventually, but it's very fire resistant. I'm sure someone somewhere has done a study and, and knows the properties of, but it's almost like plastic. And considering it's natural and it's come out of a, a creature's body, it's amazing stuff. It's, it's, it really is bizarre stuff. Obviously not preaching to the converted. Anyone that's done this themselves, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Some people say, well, I don't bother taking that out. I do. I like to take it out. I think once that bait's on a rig, you want that flexibility, you know? You want it to move about. So we've got three nice squid, skinned or membrane removed. The quills, I think that's what I'll call them. Quills, quills, backbone, whatever. everything clean and then we've got this black lug can't go wrong this black lug's almost like a mag magical bait isn't it that tar like quality that greasy oily quality when you say squid and black lug people would instantly say are you fishing for cod it's ju they just seem to go together squid black lug cod and that's what we're going to be aiming for. Right, where's my needle gun? I'm all sixes and sevens. I've got myself disorganized. I was organized, now I'm disorganized. Um, 
I can't remember which one of those two elastics I was using, but I wasn't keen on it. Through the head, up the body, dress it out, make it look the shape and size that you want. Look at what worms you've got. These are almost perfectly sized for doubling up. You could say put one either side, Mark. Oh, I think the volume and the bulk, I don't think it really matters that much. But if it makes you happy, put one either side, only put one on. I'm going, I'm going full tilt for broke. When I go fishing tomorrow night from the shore, I am excited. I haven't been out on the shore for a while. Um, it was poorly. It wasn't very well. I caught the COVID. I went to work, caught the COVID. Um, and although I wasn't poorly, poorly, you know, I wasn't hospitalised or anything like that. Oh, it wasn't nice. It wasn't pleasant. And that was being double jabbed as well. Double jabbed, caught the COVID. So you can still catch it. I think you still, I'm no expert, follow government guidance, but I think you can pass it on as well, even if you are jabbed. Some stuff trying to escape, trying to elasticate that. It's almost like <laughs> damage control. Everything's trying to pop out. Um, I think you get the, the gist of what I'm trying to achieve here. I'm going to carry on and do a, a chunk of these. And then when it comes to doing the next vacuum, I'm going to do a harder vacuum next time round to show you the difference. So you can compare the two. Um, vac some vacuum machines won't give you the opportunity to do like a light vacuum or a hard vacuum. Um, if I do hardback crabs for um, when I'm smooth hound fishing, I'll hard vacuum those. If I do mackerel in a big bag and I put big mackerel in it, a hard vacuum those. They tend to store better if you, if you vacuum them hard. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a cracking bait. I'm, you know, I'm excited to use that. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Should be good. Should be good fun. Me, I wash my hands, wash my cloth just to stop. I think the best way of describing it is transference. What you'll do is you'll touch this, touch that, move this, move that. And if you don't keep yourself reasonably clean, everything will be covered in squid juice. And then tomorrow I'll come into the workshop and it will be absolutely honking. <laughs> you certainly wouldn't want to do this in your kitchen at home, I don't think. Those of you who've got no choice, obviously you have to have a good clean down here. Um, otherwise Mrs W will be on my case. Okay, so where's my little bag? My bag of bits and trimmings, just to keep my work area clear. All my little trimmings, look, nothing goes to waste. Off camera, I've prepared a truckload of bait, which pretty much consists of a pound of squid and two more wraps of black lug. That's all prepped, ready for vacuum. All of the tailings, all of the loose ends, the wings, the, the tentacles and all the rest of it, that is an oversized bag. I wouldn't normally do that. I'd have gone for a small size bag. I was expecting to be putting a lot more in there. That didn't happen. I didn't really, I didn't really estimate it that well. Um, but the beauty with this is I don't need all that bag. I don't need all that bag. So I don't need to waste the bag. What you can do is cut it down to the size that you do need. I've trimmed the bag. That's not wasted. I can use that bag for something else. Trimmings again or a smaller bait. That's what I've got. Simply place that in, making sure that the end is actually in the chamber. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, just line it up. I'm fussy, you know I've got a bit of OCD. Um, and then what I'm gonna set to is uh, a moist setting and 
gentle. So it's got, it's got options, you can choose what you want. So it knows now there's gonna be a liquid in there. It knows it doesn't have to literally pull every last bit out to, to do it. Um, and then we go to the vac and seal. It will draw all the air out. You can see it's cut out quite quick. It's gonna do a little countdown now. It will just sit there and hold for a bit. Again, not really a spectator sport. Clean my scissors while I'm waiting. Always have another job on the go. Then you can swap between stuff. And it'll do the countdown. Come on in, come on in. Squid tentacle, doing its job, sticking to something. Mm. Oh, I just heard a click in the background while I've given the fire a bit of a prod. Click in the background. And progress down to zero, it's done. Right, so what have we got? We have got a sealed bag. Did put a little bit of liquid to the top, not much. But we've got a sealed bag with some excess that we can trim off, if, if you want to. It doesn't mean you have to. Um, but you can see where the sealed lines are because it's where it's melted the plastic together. I just don't like, you know, when everything's neat and packed away in the freezer, I just don't like loads of stuff flopping around. So that is a vacuum packed little baguette, if you like, of, um, of like trimmings. And the beauty of that is you can accumulate a few of those when you've got enough and you're gonna go on another session, you think you might need to use your ground bait, you're gonna use, you know, like, you're gonna go for bream and use small baits, or you're going for like micro species. Look at that, that's all you need. That is a beautiful little bag of bait nothing wasted that can go in the freezer exactly like that along with my pre-prepared lightly vacuumed cod baits they're going in the freezer because i am going to freeze them back down so they're going to be frozen for tomorrow they're going to be defrosting on the on route to it's cold enough i'll probably get away with leaving them in the fridge if i'm honest but i will freeze them back down and then the next thing so that is a small bag. I've got an absolute truckload of bait there. So I've swapped from the small bag, continuous bag, to the larger bag. Just put it in the machine, put it underneath the cutter. It is a loose end, so we need to seal the end before we start. And you've got a manual seal option on the machine. Just press that, it's gonna do its thing. I'm having a bit of a clear up as well in between while I'm getting all this ready. That is going to be my primary bag. This big bag is my primary bag. That is the one I'm only going to break into when I really need to. You can see all the juices are in there. So that, all that bait is going to steep and be together like that. I'm in two minds about freezing actually. I might store that in the fridge overnight. There's no need to freeze it again. So we've sealed an end put out as much as I'm looking at it, how much do I need? About that much. We've got a bag sealed on three sides. I know I'm repeating myself, but you know, repetition's good. Someone may be following this because they've just bought one, a, a machine equivalent that they're trying out themselves. Little do a good one, good vacuum machine. So I've just folded the end over. I've got myself a parcel. Now, I'm gonna move this out of the way so you get a clear view. I'm gonna load this bag up with all of this bait. There's quite a lot of liquid on there. I don't want it running everywhere. Because <laughs> it does, ju it just gets messy, doesn't it? It's not like I'm being picky, it just gets messy. Um, all right, load the bag up. got a few squid heads on their own in there because I want that variation. I've got some of those, what I like to call them bombs. When I pierce them, they're just literally going to start leaching straight away immediately. And that's, you, you literally just want to pierce and cast. One of those bombs just start to explode actually there, let you can see that. And we keep packing these in. Get it all in there, try and position them so it's a fairly evenly packed bag. Another squid head, last squid head. 
you know if I move that, all of that juice is just going to run off of that and go everywhere. Put that in the bucket, put that to one side. So we've got our parcel of loveliness now. That is our pre-prepared bait. I'm just looking at it. It's going to just you just get an idea for the shape and size of what your bag's going to end up looking like. So get the vacuum machine back out. Just quick check of the settings. I am on moist and gentle. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere, isn't there? But I won't tell it. Moist and gentle. Someone's going to say something, I know. Position everything in, close it all down, and we'll go back and seal. For big stuff like this, that's going to manoeuvre things around a bit, I like just to shape it up. Just let it do its thing. Get my cloth. Doing its countdown, little click, and we're done. We are spent. Okay, just do a little trim, don't need all that excess baggage. It's not necessary, you don't have to do this. You know I'm quite fussy, you know I fuss around. I like doing all this stuff. And there we go. Absolutely. Spectacular. On the day, fill it in knife or your scissors. You just open it up. They're already pre-wrapped, pre-done, good to go. I've got my primary bag, my secondary bag. That's the one I know I'm gonna use all of. That's the one I'm only gonna open if I burn through the bait. Vacuum machine's done its job and I love it. So that is the Suvu vacuum machine. Vacuum packaging machine. Small bags, large bags. Pre-prepared cod baits, vacuum packed, sealed. They're not gonna leak in small and larger sizes. All of the trimmings from the pre-preparation are still kept and can be used as a bait or as ground bait or as chum. And the packaging keep things clean, it's another use. The last thing I will say with the vacuum machine is you can make these bags smaller, larger, do what you want. If you're gonna store packets of hooks on a boat, vacuum bag them. If you're gonna do your rigs and you know you've got specific rigs for a specific day and you don't want um, to carry boxes within like a rucksack or a tackle box, when they're vacuum packed in twos and threes inside something like that, you can instantly see what they are. And even though you cut along the line to open them, you keep the bag, it can be reused because you can use the sealing function on there. So you can vacuum pack rigs as well. A really versatile piece of kit. I think every sea angler would appreciate a vacuum machine and some vacuum bags as a Christmas present. With that time of year, it's December, it's cold. Cod in white in, <laughs> conger eels in bass, bait prep, keep your hands dry and warm on the beach. Pre-prepared, hook up, cast out, warm up, fish on. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been of some use. Take care, tight lines, happy fishing. From me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. I need to put some more wood on the fire. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.